welcome everyone um, to Perspective Graduate Student Discovery Day or evening or whatever you want to call it. So we have a bunch of folks on the call now from the Department of Nutritional Sciences and then some few folks that will jump in later on the call. Um, so I'm Kendra Sonneville. I am um, number two on this uh, the list of the agenda, but we'll flip flop and, and go with it. So I'm an associate professor in the department. I've been here since 2014 and I'm in the co-chair of the admissions committee. So we'll be hopefully looking at many of your applications in the, in the coming months. Um, we'll also be joined by our associate chair, Andy Jones. Um, and we have Sarah Ball, the co-director of our graduate program in nutrition and dietetics, which is undergoing some very, very exciting changes that you're going to hear about in a few minutes. We have Carol and Casey who will be here monitoring the chat and keeping us organized. Um, and then near the end of our session, we'll be joined by um, uh, several students that are currently in our department. Um, and we are going to just sort of step away and we hope that you can hear from them um, and ask questions without sort of us looking um, to get a better sense of what it's like to actually be a student in, um, in our department. Um, so let's maybe pop forward now to the, the slide about Ann Arbor. Um, so we'll, we'll have um, Dr. Jones talk a little bit about our department and sort of what makes our department unique, but I think it's useful to situate kind of our department within sort of the greater university and in Ann Arbor itself. Um, no matter what we're, um, uh, what type of uh, organization or sort of day that we're having in our department. If there's a why Ann Arbor slide, I'm asked to do it because I'm like the ultimate Ann Arbor hype woman. I really love this town. And I um, moved here after living in Boston for uh, almost 15 years. And I thought, oh, Ann Arbor is going to be boring. And I had lots of other adjectives to describe it. And I can't tell you how wonderful life is in Ann Arbor. It wins all sorts of awards and accolades um, related to um, the experience for college students. The number one best college town in America seems like a pretty big get in terms of our titles. Um, I think it's a really great city if you happen to like or love sports. I think of Football Saturday um, on our campus is as good as it gets. Like this, the spirit of this campus is wonderful. We have tons of um, arts in the city and within campus, um, tons of uh, parks, like actually an insane number of parks, um, great places to, to hike within Ann Arbor and then not too far away. Um, and just the, the, the college itself, we have more than 1400 student organizations at Michigan. So if there's something that you wanna dig in deep uh, into other than nutrition. We have several student organizations related to nutrition too, um, but there is sort of something for everyone on this campus. And we, I think we often get questions about whether and how people will um, handle our winters. I think our winters are easier to tolerate than our summers. Um, I am not a warm weather person and it gets pretty humid in the summer. So that's a little bit off-putting, but um, the winter is great, right? There's no such thing as bad weather, just bad gear. So if you have some good winter boots and a long heavy coat, you will survive the winter and it will be wonderful. And in fact, the, the four seasons that we have here is like totally exceptional. So um, I will stop my, my hype pitch for... Um, uh, for Ann Arbor, I just do a quick check to see if Dr. Jones has joined us. Um, if not, I can do it. I feel like I've been here a while. Yeah, I can talk and, about our department. <laughs> yes, and I, I think, right. yeah, if you can do that, that yeah. would be absolutely okay. So let me go back. Whoops, sorry. No worries. Other way. I think. No, no. Sorry. No worries. We're all <laughs> friends here. We're all going to know each other really well in the next year. I have a good feeling, so <laughs> it will be fine. Okay, so I'm going to take you right back up. Yeah, to, right yeah. here. Thank you. Um, yeah, sure thing. So um, just a little bit about our department. We have been um, a freestanding department of nutrition since 2015, and before um, before that, we were embedded within environmental health sciences. So you're going to see a lot of unique elements of our department because we originally were housed in environmental health sciences. And in the last five or so years, we have grown enormously as a freestanding department. Um, so it's like it's wild to think since I've been here since since before we became a department to see how much our um, faculty and our courses have grown. So we have 46 courses that are taught by um 
uh, faculty and structure uh, instructors and lecturers within our departments so of 46 nutrition focused classes. We have 35 faculty members, which include 14 um, core faculty members, 12 joint faculty members that might be um, joint from different um, units on our campus. So folks that are also based in epidemiology or folks that are based at the medical school. We have five lectures and five adjunct appointments. This is our current um, uh, numbers in terms of, of the students that are, are um, in our program this year. We have 66 students in the uh, Masters of uh, Public Health program. It's by far our largest program. 16 students in our Master of Science program. And you'll hear a little bit later today the difference between these two programs. And we currently have 11 PhD students. Um, something that's like very impressive about our, um, our students is that they go on and do great things and, and seem to be really connected with us even after they graduate. So we have a gigantic alumni network of over 750 alumni within Michigan and truly across the world that are relatively in, engaged and um, sort of provide great contacts in terms of job prospects and internship prospects um, for our current students. So in terms of our research strengths, um, this is always um, tricky to summarize because we have lots of faculty that do really interesting and sort of unique things. Um, to, to sort of map onto these four pictures, we have several faculty that are interested in biopsycho uh, or biosocial and early life environmental exposures. And so this is one of the areas of focus that really comes out of our history of being connected with the Department of Environmental Health Sciences. So folks that are interested in um, environmental exposures and their impact on metabolism or intergenerational patterns of growth, metabolic syndrome, things in that neighborhood. Um, in the bottom corner, we have folks interested in um, uh, social behavioral determinants of diet and weight. That's sort of the, the, the corner that I fall in. My own research program is focused on eating disorders prevention, but we have folks that do research in, in many different diseases related to nutrition um, and the impact of the environment, of the food system, of the family on diet and weight. Um, we have uh, several faculty that are interested in um, uh, micronutrients and the role of nutrition on regulation of metabolic disease and the overall role of micronutrients on human health. And then finally, um, an area of, uh, of focus of particularly Dr. Jones in our department is on food systems. And we have several faculty interested in a related topic of food security and food insecurity and thinking about the intersection between nutrition, agriculture, mal malnutrition, sustainable food systems, food justice, and those types of areas. Um, so why nutritional sciences at university or at the University of Michigan? So like what's unique about our department? Um, one thing that's actually quite unique is that we're based within a school of public health. If you look around the country at various nutrition departments, many of them are housed in schools of agriculture or our freestanding departments or maybe in uh, departments of um human ecology or something not related to public health. And the fact that our nutrition program is based in the School of Public Health provides unique experience because folks who come to our department get deep nutrition knowledge, but also in the context of public health that is really focused on prevention, social determinants of health, social justice, and those elements of food and diet. Um, we offer, and there's again some changes in this program that Sarah will tell you about, but we offer a graduate program in nutrition and dietetics for students who are pursuing an MPH or an F MS degree. So it allows people to leave our program eligible to be registered dietitian nutritionists. Um, many other programs uh, of nutrition require you to sort of know that you want to be a dietitian as an undergrad. And so you're taking dietetics classes pretty early in your college um, trajectory. And at our program, it's something you can begin and finish as a graduate student. Um, and there's several different options in terms of how you do your MPH degree program for folks who are interested in dietetics and those that are not. Um, and folks who choose to do an MS uh, degree, we have two different um, tracks. One is on clinical nutrition that is focused on a research project or an independent project that is more practice oriented or a research focused thesis. So, I mean, I think a great strength of our program is our ability to customize the number of programs and sort of offerings that we have. 
We have um, several uh, scholarships and fellowships um, available to students um, uh, that you see here. Um, I already spoke about the flexibility, but again, that is, I think, um, if I had to describe our department in one word, I would use flexible uh, because we have so many elective courses, certificates, dual degree options, in addition to just the sheer number of degree offerings that we have. Um, we have a small department size and a, and a relatively um, small faculty to student ratio. So there's a lot of personalized academic advising and career advising um, that students get because they're matched with a faculty um, member from day one that remains your advise, or advisor for the full two years. And so it's just really personalized because of our small size and because of our ratio. And as I already alluded to, um, there's lots of student organizations on campus and then more than 40 that are focused on public health, several focused on uh, nutrition or eating disorders or maternal and child health. So lots of opportunities for volunteering, sort of um, making professional connections and getting to know people within our department, our school, and across the campus. What makes it great? So here are some quotes about what makes us great and unique. Um, and these are direct quotes from alumni of our program um, that sort of highlight how we maybe are different from other programs. And this speaks to our kind of unique research areas in the environmental health and toxicant and nutritional epigen epigenetic space, but also that we are um, fun and we're <laughs> no, uh, we don't like to brag here, but we are very fun and collaborative. Um, and um, we have the ability for students to intersect with the public health field and the clinical fields through the dietetics program. And so I think that's really um, uh, just a, a, a real sort of unique um, focus of our department that other departments of nutrition are not able to, to offer. I already told you Ann Arbor was great, so we can <laughs> move on. Um, that hasn't changed. And oh, this is still me. Okay, so in terms of um, where to apply, and we'll talk a little bit more about the various programs in a sec, um, but the logistics of applying to our program for the next um, academic year, so for fall of 2023, um, it depends on where, uh, what program you are interested in, the application process. So for folks who are pursuing an MS or a PhD degree, that degree is administered through the Rackham Graduate School, which is the graduate school on sort of the whole of the University of Michigan campus. And so that is where you will apply through. For folks who are um, interested in pursuing an MPH degree, there is sort of a common uh, MPH application that's done through SOFAs, the Schools of Public Health Application Service, and the applications are slightly different, but you're accessing sort of different applications depending on the degree program that you are interested in. So what does a successful application look like? So as a co-chair of the admissions committee, um, I can speak to um, the um, comprehensiveness of our evaluation. Um, we read your applications in detail. We don't have any sort of check boxes of do they have this score, yes or no, they're in or they're out. We offer a really detailed read and we realize that people come to graduate school with a whole range of experiences and trajectories. And so we want to know um, uh, we want to sort of know who you are as a well-rounded person. Ideally, um, uh, you have a strong academic record. We want to know about your ability to perform um, academically, but particularly in science classes before you come to our program, because the the first year of all the programs is, 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 is quite rigorous from a scientific standpoint. Um, and we wanna make sure that folks are gonna um, be prepared for that first year. So we'll look at overall in science GPA. Um, we read the statements with great curiosity and we want to know why nutritional sciences, why is this a field you're pursuing and why, why U of M. Um, you are expected to submit three letters of recommendation and uh, we ask that you submit them uh, or uh, request them from people who know you really well and who can speak to your strengths um, and really are able to provide you a strong letter of recommendation. Um, as I mentioned, we do this comprehensive review, and so if there's something about your academic record that you feel like needs an explanation, explain it to us. We would love to know, you know, if you had an off semester or you had a life experience that um, 
um, uh, may have related to sort of a gap in your um, trajectory or a lapse in terms of your record, let us know about it. That is so helpful for us to understand who you are as, um, uh, as a person. Um, and one of the things which you hear about in a sec is that our programs have various prerequisites and folks that aren't able to complete the prerequisites can't start on time. And so we look really closely to make sure you're going to be ready to go in fall of 2023. So if you don't have your prerequisites done, um, let us know about it and let us know your plan for doing those classes. You can say, I've already enrolled for this class and I'm planning on doing this online version of a class for this semester so that on day one, I will have all these classes completed. So just give us the explanation so that we, if not, we're going to hunt you down. So that sort of saves us the, the, the that extra step. Let us know what your plan is for doing those prerequisites. So as I mentioned, we have the prerequisites. So um, for the, the, the prereqs, uh, we want one semester of the following classes um, with a C average or better. Uh, one general chemistry or general inorganic chemistry class. We don't require a lab. Um, one organic class, again, uh, no lab required. Um, a biochemistry class and a human physiology class or an anatomy and physiology class, but it must be human. That is something we'll look for on the transcript. Um, if you are planning on applying for the MS or the PhD degree, we also require um, a calc course or statistics. Um, and again, if you are currently enrolled in one of them, let us know. We will likely ask um, you to send the transcript once the course is complete, or if you're not currently enrolled, but you have a plan of where you could take it in advance of the first day of the semester um, next fall, again, just let us know what your plan is for getting those, um, uh, getting those prerequisites completed. I think Programs Pathways is me. So thank you, Dr. Sonneville. Um, okay, so she already kind of teed me up a little bit here. I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail. A lot um, of foreshadowing in this presentation. A lot, a lot of foreshadowing, <laughs> yes. So as, as we've already talked about, sort of there are three different degrees you can get in this department, MPH, MS, or PhD. Um, and so that's like kind of your first uh, decision point. What kind of degree do you want? Another decision point is, do you want to be a registered dietitian at the end of the day? Or do you not want to be a registered dietitian at the end of the day? Because we have programs for both of that. Um, and so within the Masters of Public Health, if you want to be a dietitian, you would go into the MPH dietetics program. And that is the application that you would submit on SOFUS. If you are looking to get an MS and you want to be a dietitian, you would enter our MS and clinical nutrition program. Um, and then if you don't want to be a dietitian and you want to get an MPH, you would do that through our general nutritional sciences program. Um, and then our MS is just a, th a thesis based program. And then our PhD currently is not attached to dietetics, um, but we do have three, um, gosh, what are those called? Divisions or, or themes or uh, places with which, within which you can get your PhD, molecular and biochemical nutrition, nutritional epidemiology and nutrition intervention. Um, okay, actually move on Carol to, there we go. So I'm, ecstatic to announce that this is um, long in the development, but very, very recent in the accreditation and approval of our new graduate program in nutrition and dietetics. So if you're here and you know you want to be a registered dietitian at the end of the day, this is the program that you're looking to apply to, whether that's through the MPH route or the MS route, like I just kind of stated. Um, just a little bit about becoming a registered dietitian. Um, we are bound by our commission and dietetic registration. So you have to, to be a registered dietitian, you have to complete the appropriate coursework. You have to do the appropriate number of um, supervised practice hours, also called experiential learning, and you have to take an exam. And so programs across the country do this in various and different ways. Um, in our program, you get all of the didactic coursework and that supervised experiential learning or supervised practice um, in the whole program throughout the two years. And so one application, one stop shopping, you get in, you're golden until you go and you take that exam at the end, um, which incidentally we prepare you very well for. So um, we'll, you'll be passing. Um, 
so a little, a couple of things to point out about that. Um, the experiential learning hours are built into the program in two different ways. And so they're built into the program during your coursework in the first two years. So while you're in a course, say food um, science and or food service and culinary science, you will be at a site also doing experiential learning in that area. So that's the first way. The second way is a more concentrated um, two summers worth of experiential learning hours. And so those are built into the summer after your first year and the summer after your second year. Well, you will be kind of working more full time um, spread throughout different sites in those summers. Um, I think another really great thing about our program that definitely differentiates us from others um, you know, aside from the, the things that Kendra already touched on, is that we've got an opportunity, you have an opportunity to choose an elective series in our program. And that's really built on the breadth of our faculty and their expertise areas and the fact that we've got so many faculty doing so many cool things. Um, we really, really wanted you to be able to take advantage of that. And so how that looks and how that works is you would take two to three classes throughout um, the two years that are built around a specific theme. And I'll go over those in a second. Um, and then you have an opportunity to actually do some of your supervised experiential learning around that theme as well. Um, so the themes that we have are performance nutrition, weight inclusive nutrition, lifestyle management, global food systems, nutrition advocacy and policy, maternal child nutrition, and that we, well, one that we like to call create your own or uh, make your own path, which is basically, if you don't see it, we can help you find it and make sure that you attain whatever career goal it is that you're looking to do after, um, after the program. And then um, just again to reiterate, this is like a one-stop shop and you were ready to take the exam when you were done. All right, thank you so much, Sarah and Kendrin. Um, I am gonna go over a little bit um, about curriculum and then we will have some time um, to ask questions and, and some, get some answers for you. Um, so as you have heard about the MPH degree, um, one of the exciting things about the program itself um, is that it is within the School of Public Health. And so we have um, required courses that are kind of your core classes that you will be taking as an MPH student. And the exciting thing about that is that you are um, immersed with students from biostats, epidemiology, environmental health sciences. And um, this particular core class um, will be, it's, at this point, it will be in your first year You'll have um, the first semester, it'll, it will be a really hands-on experience. Um, and again, you'll be getting more of the whole, you know, breadth of um, public health. And then we have core classes. Of course, we have more than these, but they won't all fit on the slide. But, um, you know, principles of nutritional sciences. If you're excited about vitamins and minerals, then nutritional sciences is for you. Um, we have a wonderful professor, Sue Cole, who um, teaches um, a nutritional assessment course. So um, we can also share, um, and maybe Casey, you can do this. You, we have a link and it's on the website and you can look at all the courses that are available. Um, there's also in your first year a research seminar. I actually attended that class yesterday. Um, and we heard from a um, cardiologist and he is doing some research with actually one of our alumni. So she is a dietitian, um, but she's also doing research um, with him um, with some, um, they're working with um, VA vets. So just, you know, kind of exciting. Um, and then as it's been talked about, we have a lot of elective classes. Um, you can take those within nutritional sciences, public health um, classes, health behavior, health education, epidemiology. And then we have students who take classes across campus. So if you're interested in social work, public policy, um, Ross Business School, you, you have this opportunity to kind of um, leave public health and 
um, go see what else is happening across campus. Um, Sarah mentioned um, about summer experiences. So if you choose the MPH nutritional sciences, you will have a summer experience and internship. And then if you are choosing MPH dietetic, dietetics, you'll be having that supervised experiential learning. Um, during the summer, first summer and second summer. All right, and then um, just a little bit more about the MS and the PhD degrees. Um, you'll be having more of that science background, more research um, with, this, with these specific degrees. Um, again, you'll see some of the core classes and then again, being able to take some of those electives um, and then the difference to Sarah mentioned this earlier about um, if you choose the MS thesis um, or you will actually be writing a thesis, you'll have a mentor be doing your own research. Um, and then if you're picking the clinical nutrition, more of the dietetics track, um, more of an evidence based project, you'll be working with a partner in the community, um, working on nutrition topics and um, working with them for a, a longer period of time. Um, all right. And then we also have focus areas in nutritional sciences. Um, we have a lot of students who come because they're interested in sustainable food systems. Um, we also have students who are interested in mater maternal and child nutrition. So we call these focus areas because we have many classes within the School of Public Health, but then again, outside of the School of Public Health. Um, so when you graduate, you can really feel like you have um, some good knowledge um, and skills in either of these areas. Um, U of M also has lots of graduate certificates um, within the School of Public Health. I just listed a few maternal and child nutrition as one of our newest certificates. Um, with the School of Kinesiology, we have physical activity and nutrition, global health. We have a student who just um, completed the diversity, equity, and inclusion certificate. And I spoke with a student today who did the health informatics um, certificate. So again, lots of opportunities at U of M, um, not just within the School of Public Health. Okay, and now I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah. Alrighty, so as you can see from this slide, our uh, graduates go on to do uh, various things. Um, I am most familiar with those who graduate from the dietetics program. And as you can tell from the slide, a majority of our students over the years have graduated from the dietetics program, which is why the health provider hospital is um, our highest percentage of um, the biggest sector that where people go in to work. But as you can tell, there are people doing all sorts of things. I think that's the great thing about nutrition in general is you can kind of do whatever you want to with it. Um, whether you want to be um, a data analyst or a research project manager, um, you want to go work for a nonprofit, you want to work in food systems, um, you want to work on a farm, like you, you name it, you can do it. Um, dietetics is kind of the more traditional path, I guess. So a lot of people end up in that clinical space, whether that's in a hospital or in an outpatient clinic, um, but dietitians exist in also a variety of places. Um, again, in the community, in those organizations, um, serving people in the community, food service. We have folks who have opened their own private practice. We have folks who have created their own food companies. Um, and so really it's just varied and, and kind of wide open. All right. So we can open it up for um, Q&A and you are more than welcome to unmute yourself or raise your hand. Um, if you wanna put something in the chat in case if you wanna read it, um, what, whatever works for, for you. I can start with the first question in the chat that I saw come through because it has to do with experiential learning. So I, I, can, I can answer that. Um, let's see, Kayla asked, do all of the experiential learning hours for the dietetics concentration in the summer take place in Ann Arbor? I think the one thing I can say about our uh, program is we have no hard and fast rules. Um, that said, 
uh, yes, the vast majority of your supervised experiential learning will take place in southeastern Michigan. I almost said southeastern Ohio because that's where I grew up. I mean, Michigan. Um, so we try to maintain a 60 mile boundary in around Ann Arbor. Um, but we're a pretty saturated area. And so we do have to go out and there are really awesome opportunities outside of the area of Ann Arbor. And we like to have people take advantage of those. Um, but then to also add a little bit more depth and context onto that, we're actually trying to create some new opportunities um, for some more under, under helped or under resourced communities or places where there's not a dietetics program currently. So the UP up in Traverse City, and we're trying to open some new experiences up there for folks to take advantage of too. So I could take that question um, uh, from Yosefin from about the PhD program, about how many candidates we usually accept. Um, so our PhD classes um, vary a bit more from year to year um, than our Master of Science and MPH programs. And that's because they're heavily dependent on funding. For a faculty person to accept a PhD student, we have to provide full funding, and that can come through um, a combination of grants and um, graduate student instructor funding, or occasionally students come in with their own funding from various sources. Uh, but in the absence of funding, um, we can't take even the best possible candidate. Um, and so that's why PhD admissions are just a whole lot trickier than MSN and MPH. Um, so it would be important to reach out to potential faculty people to see if they do have funding. Um, and if not, if they might be open to mentoring, if another um, or co-mentoring, if another faculty person maybe has some funding. And so I think that work is better to do um, sooner rather than later, um, particularly if you're interested in working with a faculty member or two, if they have no grant funding on the horizon, um, it's helpful to have that conversation early and honestly about the likelihood that we would be able to take on um, uh, to su support you as a PhD student. Um, so it's certainly not mandatory to get confirmation prior to completing the application, but it's just useful from the um, uh, from the um, ability of sort of gauging the likelihood that you will have a successful application, um, because really the successful application is um, is based on really three criteria, um, sort of the, the quality of your application in terms of all the, the stuff I already talked about, the faculty mentoring match, you want someone who has overlapping but not identical research interests to you, and then the funding piece. And unfortunately, it's the funding piece that ends up being the, the biggest issue. So the sooner you can get in touch with people, the better. Um, I'm feeling stumped about the lack of biology that dietitians have. Certainly, there must be something that they were able to count for a bio class. I know this is something that looks like it applies to two of you all. Sarah, is that an uh, like DPD do, requirement? Um we well i mean uh no short answer okay no. so they didn't have to improve <laughs> biology some way somehow in order for it, that to go through i think that um for those of you who asked this this is going to have to be a we'll get back to you question because that's a very good one and no one's ever asked it before and with our um changing and of programs i think it's also a confusing question for us <laughs> so tpd on that one um, I can take the next question, which is from Kathleen. What is your status of being a combined master's dietetic internship program? Will we also apply through DICAS? Um, okay, so lots of confusion around here, and I'll tell you why. So currently, as in right now, this moment today, our students who enrolled in the program are enrolled in a dietetics curriculum. And then they're gonna to have to go on and apply to a dietetic internship program through DICAS or through our own standalone dietetic internship. Um, that's the information that's currently on our website. <laughs> that it was the, the way we were rolling until we were um, formally accredited last week, right? So the program that you all would be applying to, that option is no longer available to you from us. 
So now we have everything wrapped into one program. So you don't have to apply through DICAS. You don't have to apply for an internship. You get all of that with us in those two years through your coursework and that supervised experiential learning. Supervised experiential learning is just a really fancy word for internship hours. And so you get both. Um, so no worries with, with that. Hopefully that answered the question. And then just to know we're associated with our own medical center. A lot of our rotations um, are through Michigan Medicine. Um, just a couple more questions that I will, um, that are relatively quick answers related to the lack of prerequisite for human anatomy and physiology. What are the chances of getting in? So if you are missing um, a prerequisite, we can, um, but only one, all the other prerequisites are done and the rest of the application is strong. We are able to um, offer a, essentially like a, pr a provisional admission. That means that we um, feel confident that you would um, be accepted, but we still will need to see a grade from an anatomy and physiology class or whatever the missing prerequisite is. Um, and so we can do that conditional admit, but we don't officially finalize the admission until um, that class is completed. And some people will take those, those final classes in the summer um, before they start. And so it's fine if it's a bit delayed, but um, uh, they're in order to start on that first day of the semester in, in the fall, the, that class would have to be completed. Um, in terms of the PhD application, um, we tend to review um, for the um, the admission cycle uh, for fall of 2023. We would be reviewing PhD applications in December and January and usually making decisions by January or February. Um, and so that's sort of our timeline. And uh, the question about sports nutrition, we don't have many faculty that um, explicitly focus on sports nutrition. Um, I would encourage you to reach out to Peter Mancuso, who um, is faculty affiliated with our physical activity nutrition um, uh, certificate program. So there's a lot of expertise in that area. And then our joint faculty, Rebecca Hassan, who has a joint appointment um, in kinesiology. She does some work related to um, exercise and nutrition. Okay, I think we can maybe one more question because then I know our student panel is here. Mm. Um, and can I so, just quickly answer yes. the one about the DPD statement because I have a feeling that's going to be a quite popular question. Yes, please. If you have a DPD statement from your or will from your undergraduate institution, um, yes, you don't have to include that statement, but please somewhere in your application signal to us that you have that statement. Um, because we will be working with you one on one to try to ensure that you're not duplicating classes and that we can take your prior learning and apply it to the classes that you already have done. Um, and it's just really easy. It's it's helpful for us to know that now instead of knowing it when you've been in the program for a month. Okay. Any other questions that that you feel like need to be answered? Um, Casey and I can also do some after the panel. I have, yeah, I had a quick fine. question just uh, jumping back um, to a question about the prereqs that was answered. If we are completing a prereq and um, we plan to have it finished, you know, how, how do we let you know, the admissions committee know when we do finish it, what our status was for that class? Yeah, so I don't know if Carol, if you want to take it, but Carol will be in close touch with anyone who has um, outstanding prerequisites. And so they'll, there will be an email exchange that um, you can alert her. I don't know, Carol, if there's sort of another more formal way, but um, and, um, yeah, go ahead. I, and I encourage you, you know, you can apply without having all your prereqs complete. I, I think sometimes students think they can't apply unless they have everything done. But you can apply to the program. And like Kendron said, all, you just need to make sure that within your statement, you are telling us your plan to finish those prerequisites. Um, your application will be flagged and you will hear from me or Casey and we will be asking you how, you know, how are you, you know, when do you plan to take your biochemistry class or your organic chemistry? So we will start communicating with you, but um, 
but you definitely can apply without having everything done. It's just, it's really a good idea to have a plan ahead of time. Hopefully that helps. And then, yes, then we would be communicating and you would be sending in your transcripts to, to, to me. And then I would be making note that we have um, received that so that you can start the program in the fall. Makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any other ones that you feel are pressing that should be answered right now? Last question. Sorry. Um, are admissions accepted on a rolling basis? Nope. No. Okay. Nope. So we have, so, um, you know, we call it this priority deadline. So December 1st for our PhD, that's our, our priority deadline. And pretty much if you are a PhD applicant, you want to get it in by December 1st. If you are a, a P, an MPH or an MS student, again, December 1st is your priority deadline, but you actually can submit your application up to May 15th. I don't necessarily recommend that. Um, you know, you you want to get your application in sooner than later, but don't feel pressured if if you're thinking, oh, I've got to get it in by December first. Um, it's just a priority deadline for those two programs. Um, but I always tell everyone, you know, aim for January, February, because um, if you're interested in a scholarship, every single student is considered for a scholarship and the sooner you get your application in, the better, um, because that money eventually runs out. Um, and then the other thing for international students, your application for MPH or MS must be submitted by January 15th. That is the deadline for the international students. Is that helpful? Very oh. much, thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you to. Um, Sarah Ball and Kendra Sonneville for being here. And um, they are going to log off, but we are going to, Casey's gonna enter or set you up with our student panel. Hi at all. Okay, so now we're moving on to our student panel portion. So we have four current students with us. Um, they're gonna introduce themselves and then answer questions for you guys about what it's like being an actual student in nutritional sciences. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Jackie, one of our students um, who will go ahead and take over for this portion. Me and Carol are gonna step away so it can be a more candid conversation and then we will join back on at eight o'clock. Yeah, and Jackie, I will keep the slide up while you introduce and then I'll take it down so that you can all see each other. Sounds good, thanks Carol. Hello everyone, my name is Jackie. I use he, him pronouns and I will be introducing your student panel or introducing you to them. So hello everyone, my name is Jackie. I am a second year um, MPH student on the dietetics track. Um, I did my undergrad at the University of California, Riverside. I got a bachelor's of science in biology. Um, I have a lot of extracurriculars that I'm not going to list, so feel free to read through them and ask me any questions if you have about them. And um, fun fact, I did in indoor percussion, which like basically means I'm a band nerd. So yeah, um, let's jump it to Lala. Lala, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Jackie. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lala. I am from Indonesia. Um, I'm first year in PH non-diabetic student. I did my undergraduate um, in Un Universitas Gajah Mada, Indonesia, and I have bachelor degree in nutrition and health. Um, one fun fact about me that I was inspired to pursue education in nutrition um, by watching a Korean TV series when I was a middle school student. So it was like um, over 10 years ago. Thank you. Thanks, Lala. Allison, would you like to go next? Yeah, sure. 
Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Allison. I am an MS student, a second year in dietetics. Um, I went to the University of Michigan for my undergraduate degree, so I have been in Ann Arbor for a very long time. Um, and I got a Bachelor of Arts in Community and Global Public Health. Um, in high school, I actually sang in choir, and we traveled to Europe to perform, so that was really fun. Um, yeah, it's a little about me. Thank you. And Jennifer, would you like to finish it up? Um, yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer. I'm a second year PhD student in nutrition epidemiology. Um, my undergrad and master's program uh, are all in Texas. Um, and uh, right now, extracurricular stuff, I'm doing mostly research. Um, and a fun fact about me is that I hang out with my dog like all the time. So and I take him out like whenever I get stressed. 